Papa Zottle over there. More like Papa Xanax. You need to relax. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> You're still upset that I gave you the stone, huh? I am. Welcome back, everyone, to the Natty Night. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, take two. Oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's going to be one of those Episode nights. 90. I'm sober. Episode 90. What's up? <laughs> Don't do it. Am I? I was no, thinking no, of it. Uh, Don't <laughs> I've, just because you were prepping so much for it. <laughs> <laughs> feeling chipper. <laughs> It's that THC spray, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's that binaka. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the 9019 Podcast. I'm Jonathan Marshall, and we are about to get into episode 90 here and now. But before then, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all again for the incredible support you've given us throughout this journey. It's been both a great time and a fantastic experience, so thank you much. Now... Let's get this party moving. Dim the lights and hit the music because we are within the Tomb of Annihilation. What about Wes and finishing the Appalachian Trail? We'll update there. Finish that off. We got a week. Uh, we got a week. <laughs> we got a week. <laughs> we got a week. Cap on the Wesson. Wesson week. Fucking Wesson. How to come up with a fucking wee name? <laughs> We're always getting that fucked up. Uh. <laughs> The Wed Wizards and Wesson. The Wed, the the wed, wed Wizards. Wed. But by the time this airs, he'll have been back like how long? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two, a month, two months. I just wanted to wrap it up though. You can't not right, right. never That's mention true. it. That's true. Yes. Wesson has returned to the Shire. Um, yeah, Wesson's back. Uh, hopefully he'll swing in tonight and say what's up. But in case he doesn't, whatever. The show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> With or without Wesson. <laughs> With or without the Wesson. <laughs> Previously on the Natty 19 podcast, Copernicus and Svitlongi were trapped within the rotating cylinder room. In between those crawl spaces, Zavril had tricked Irime into grasping Ejin's horn. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Which then replaced Obolaka. So now Obolaka's in the nether. We don't even know. Bye, Felicia. You all managed to escape that rotating trap unscathed, but not before discovering the corpse of another of the Yellow Banner Company. This one, a dragonborn paladin. <laughs> so funny. Oh, <laughs> was I the one laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Were you winking? Only, winking? only one spray next time. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, one spray. <laughs> I was laughing. I was looking at James, and it looked like he was about to laugh. I don't know. I just full attention. All right. uh, Searching him revealed another of those crystal eyes that you've been picking up here and there along the way. This one, red. You then proceeded down another of those crawl spaces, the one from the waterfall room. After breaking into uh, Destiny's Child karaoke. Uh, <laughs> TLC. <laughs> uh, Show some respect. Yeah. <laughs> After breaking in a TLC karaoke, you make your way into the crawl space and discover a small room that's been long forgotten. A safe room, as it were. You took a long rest, which it's got to be getting close to uh, 24 hammer at this point. I don't know. I thought it was already. Who knows? Twenty-four hammer. Is it? I got twenty-four written down. Yeah, me too. So it's got it's got to be getting close to twenty-five hammer. We don't even know. <laughs> Tough to tell down here. Mm. 
You used that time to study and attune some of those magical items, uh, and then you continued along the crawlway. The passage opens to a massive room, a long room, with large floating discs hovering over a 60-foot pit that runs along the entirety of the room. A massive statue of a demon stands on your side of the pit, on, on, on your balcony. And upon the balcony on the other side of the hall, set into the wall right by the door, is a rusty lever. While you are discussing the plans to traverse the long hall, Svitlangi fades into the shadows and disappears, splitting the party for the first time in Natty 19 history. Irme flies over while Zavril leaps down gracefully and climbs up the other side, Copernicus using acrobatics to leap here and there across the platforms. It's like a good X-Men scene. (laughs) Upon pulling the lever, an ominous wind billows up from below, and a grinding sound coming from the direction of the demon statue steals your attention as one of its closed fists opens revealing a tiny object that glints from the torchlight. Anyone in the room while not on one of those platforms is overcome with horrific visions of madness. So I'm going to need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. (laughs) Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to use a bit of luck to re-roll that saving throw. All right. What'd you get? A six. Uh, you Too told it. Oh, no. <laughs> Classic. Uh, I can re-roll all the way up until I know if I passed. Yeah. Well, you did. Oh. All right. So let's just long as he's not in the room. So let's start with Copernicus. I got a 13. 13. Uh, let's go to Zavril next. Zavril's uh, standing tall with an 18 save. But not tall enough. Irime. It's going to uh, be boring if we all pass. 18 for Irime? <laughs> None of you passed. You don't get a bonus to your wisdom? No. The DC was 20, ladies and gentlemen. What in the actual oh. fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh wait, hold on one moment. I'm rerolling. You can keep going. <laughs> I was actually looking to see what uh, Papa Zottle's thing was, is because I think he had something about saves in there. But yeah, I save you from right now. taking fall damage, right? So let's start with Copernicus. We're gonna be rolling on a little chart called Short Term Madness. Oh. Sounds like some uh, abyss action. I was going to say, it harkens back. It harkens it? back to the days of old. I like it. And if you're one of our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier or higher, you could check out our old Out of the Abyss episodes. That's right. From the Natty 19 Garage days. Nice plug. <laughs> when you suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they get good by the end, though? Yeah. yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah. Just the first, like. I don't know. Two halves sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think what we got like five pretty good, seven pretty good, decently recorded episodes towards the end there. Maybe more. Yeah, maybe more. Seven, ten. And two years from now, it, we'll be saying that about this. Well, guys. we were upgrading on, our. Everybody starts on. somewhere. Yeah. As as we were, that's the campaign we were using to kind of feel the podcast, the recording out, and as we were upgrading our recording equipment and everything as we were going through it, just to give a little. It's their explanation. Uh, so yes, it does progressively progress. So what do I roll on here for this madness? You're gonna give me a D100, aka percentile. Okay. Oh, it was uh, you gain advantage on all wisdom checks. Oh, but not saving throws. Right. Gotcha. I knew there's something about wisdom in there. D100. Is that a 54? 54. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing that when it comes to Copernicus. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening to me? As long as it's not happening to me, suckers. <laughs> Should have went with Svetlangi. Yeah. Copernicus. 
you see standing next to you something that could only be described as a demon and its mouth opens it lets loose a howl you look down its claws are wide open ready to lash at you and you have no choice but to react in fear and you must spend your action to attack the nearest creature next to you oh shit sticks is that me are we in uh, an initiative? Share the map. This might kick off a little bit of an initiative. Looks like it could be either. No, either one. But there was another option, right? No, nope. you must use your action to attack the nearest creature to you. Oh. Um, meanwhile, Zavril, roll a d100 because we're going to bust into an initiative. But you guys are also stricken with madness. 14. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Zavril, your horrific Just... visions cause you to retreat deep into your mind. Oh, not there. <laughs> doing so has now rendered you paralyzed. You are not the man you thought yourself to be. Hey, Hermé. Yes. Would you roll on the D100 before Copernicus attacks you? 36. <laughs> or Zavril. Irame, you've become frightened, and you must use your action and movement each round to flee from the source of the fear, which just so happens to be the nearest creature to you. So so she's jumping off the edge? <laughs> may, may as well say Copernicus, as he's the one that's <laughs> well, I, looking frothy. I have fly casts, so mm-hmm. I'll just pop up. All right, so let's roll initiative because we got ourselves a little bit of a combat. Start with Copernicus. Got a 10. Zavril, you roll your own. Hey, I rolled a high initiative finally. There you go. your own party members. That's a good one. (laughs) Irame, what do you got? I got a five. Doesn't matter anyway, you're paralyzed. (laughs) You're going to be paralyzed (laughs) first. I do nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zavril, you're paralyzed. You can't do anything, which brings us next to Copernicus Heart. You are. Ooh. You have two creatures nearest to you. And then at this point, you can't tell <laughs> what's real from fake. <laughs> and they both now look like demons that are about to attack you. I beat you out in initiative, huh, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah, I got a five. All right. Ooh. Um one, two, three. I'm going to go for Zavril. I got a two. I thought you were going to do a rhyme for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... What's no. the rest of it? <laughs> 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 One, two, three. Zavril looks good to me. <laughs> uh, Natty, 14 for a 21 to hit. And he's paralyzed, so that'd be Damn. advantage. Yeah, probably advantage. Well, regardless, that's a hit. Well, that's yeah, but, good, but he might be 14 when it hit me. But he might crit. <laughs> uh, that's, gonna, that's what I'm looking for if it's an auto crit. That does sound yes, familiar. Yes, it, it is. It's a crit, boys and girls. Oh, no. Oh. Yes. So Wayne's are we just doing double damage? It hit. <laughs> it's up to you guys. What do you want to do? Let's just do double damage, die. Oh, roll in the crit chart. Get a sack, man. I'm gonna kill Zavril. Don't is this a melee? Zavril. Is this a melee attack? Oh my goodness! Yeah, melee. Is it a melee? Yeah. Twenty sided yeah. die. Yep. Twelve. Ooh, minor artery, double damage, and the target takes two bleed damage per round for one d six rounds. Oh. That's actually a neat one. Yeah. That's a cool one. Yeah. So Zavril, you take. 15 magic slashing damage. Oh. 15. Zaves, what were you guys were at full hit points anyway, right? Yes. Yeah, we just got done resting. Because you're just standing there, it cuts in so deep, causing you to start to bleed. And <laughs> in doing so, you are no longer paralyzed because you took damage. Right. So roll a 1d6 for his... Uh, How many rounds is bleed oh, last? I have to roll the d6 on that. <laughs> <laughs> Six rounds. Damn. 
My bad, dude. I thought you were a demon. Boom. <laughs> Copernicus unleashes on Zavril. Zavril, you, you slam against the wall, gushing blood from the, from the gash in your abdomen. How long does Arame have to flee for? That's a good question. Uh, let me see. Wailing winds. Zavril just got fucked up. It was only 15 points of damage. Jesus. Still. My, 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 minor it. artery. It's too bad Copernicus can't pull that stuff when it matters. <laughs> that was just my <laughs> first attack, dude. I gotta do my second attack. <laughs> oh, <Right>. man. <laughs> you gonna do something? Or you're just gonna stand there and bleed. <laughs> Is that from I'm gonna something? take it. Tombstone. Oh. Billy Bob Thornton. I haven't seen that movie in forever. What? It's one I of know my, people love it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and in addition, you all also suffer disadvantage on all strength-based skill checks, including checks made to jump uh, to and from the floating platforms and checks made to climb walls. That's uh, another effect. Uh, in tandem with the madness. Would my concentration be broken on my fly? No, only if you take damage. Okay. And then you make a check. Um, I don't know how long this lasts, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and roll. A D100. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I do have roll a serious question die. here. <laughs> um, because yeah. I'm not going to yeah. be able to stop it. Is... Like, are we in combat against each other? Like, if yes. I notice Aramay leaving, am I going to attack her? You're in combat. Y- yes and no. You're also in combat because of the winds. The winds starts initiative as well. But you're not in combat with Aramay. No. Aramay's fleeing. You were paralyzed, and Copernicus just started to attack you. So you don't. You, I think you still have your wits generally about you. Yes. At this moment, you would know who is attacking you. Yeah. Even though we're suffering from madness, that's what I was curious. Your about. madness is now over. Your madness just paralyzed you. But now that you took damage, okay, you're done. Um, okay, so this only lasts, I I believe, one round, yeah. unless the somebody. Uh, reason I was curious is because Sentinel makes it so that I automatically get a uh, uh, opportunity of attack, even if people disengage. So. Ah. Like, if she was disengaging the, the fight from us, I would have hit her anyways. Ten <laughs> oh, yeah. feet, o- ten yeah, feet but, away, from yeah, but which would have been over Right, the but you, you have no reason to yeah, attack you. Yeah, you right? already took my spirit animal, and now you're trying to attack me? Why are you trying to attack your mate? Just Copernicus is. Why do you hate women I, so much? I'm not. That's why I was curious. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, okay, next up on... In, <laughs> next up in initiative uh, is Irame. Well, oh, wait, Copernicus Cappy gets get another, another attack. attack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Copernicus, another attack. Uh, that one's only a five on the die. It's going to miss, I think. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, well, actually, if I'm no longer freaking paralyzed, then yes, that's a miss. Yeah, so Sweet. after you snap out of it, you see me coming back at you. And nimbly dodge out of the way, right? <laughs> Classic. <Yeah>. Barely. <laughs> barely waiting. missed. I said it in my mind like I do every time. <laughs> he, uses his, he flares his duster to deflect the blow. Ooh, nice. Great visual. Forgot you wear a duster. Phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, I wear a cloak now. That's all oh, you do. Uh, pay attention to. Gotcha. Uh, damn it. You used to wear a duster. You went from a duster to a cloak? Yeah, I, I would have just downgraded my duster. <laughs> Cheeks flapping in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Does your? I hope Why it has is my a collar. posterior so cool? I hope if the cape has a collar, that could be good. All right, what do we do now? And it changes Air, colors. Airman, oh. it's your turn. You need to flee. You have one round. You have to do this for. All right. So I guess Irma would uh, fly because she's on the balcony. Yeah. And I don't want to go up the stairs, but you myself. can't. It's a dead. Do I take an opportunity attack? Oh, it's a dead attack? end. Okay. Hmm? Do I take an opportunity attack? <laughs> Well, the demon that you're perceiving no, it is the saber. Oh, okay. And yeah. it doesn't say. And it it just says you must take your action. Okay. It doesn't say you have to take a reaction. Right. So. Right. Uh, so Irbe will. I have to go full distance, right? Like as far as I can go. Yeah, you need to use your action and move. Yeah, so you're gonna dash. You're gonna go sixty feet, I believe. 
Oh, jeez. I, so I guess I'll just fly to the other side? Wait, is, isn't that yeah. where the other beast is? Isn't there a tomb guardian over there? Yeah, and it's waiting for you. Okay, well, no. I got 60 <laughs> feet back before I get there. No, it's just, it's just a statue. Okay. Well, I didn't know... If <laughs> 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 well, I thought maybe the wind animated it, and that was the The wind opened combat. its hand. Its hand. You got to go back there anyway to get whatever is in his hand. All right, so Irame will fly back <laughs> 60 feet. All right. Moving Irame. I'm proceeding to move Irame 60 feet. Irame sees uh, the blood drawn from Zavril, panics, and flies off the balcony 60 feet back from her friends. You hear a voice. Great thinking, Irame. I saw that same thing over there. It's nice and shiny. <laughs> oh, dude, you should just go straight Doc Wan for one of these guys. <laughs> like, I don't even remember what, how Doc Wan goes. <laughs> God forsaken stick and mist. <laughs> <laughs> so I almost went Doc Wan with that one, didn't I? Almost. You were close. <laughs> was, it reminded you. Were close. you. Yeah. <laughs> it triggered it. Yeah. Heaven must have sent this mist to help us. Yeah. <laughs> then he falls down the hill. Oh. Why not fight for me? <laughs> with a... To beat the devil, you need to be a devil yourself. All right. Speaking of devils, Irame flies towards the demon statue, now clutching a tiny glinting object in its palm. Yeah, distracted, Irame starts to look in that direction rather towards what's happening with her friends. What's Svitlongi doing? At this point, the winds dissipate. Nobody knows. At this point, the winds dissipate. And Nobody cares. Zavril, you're still bleeding every round. Two points. She's not doing this bullshit. <laughs> so it'll be a total of 12 points of damage. Yep. If we're out of combat. Oh, no, we're not out of combat. Oh. Well, you can be. I mean, I, it only lasted one round, so Copernicus isn't attacking, and the wind stopped. So it's all right. Once initiative comes, I'm going to disarm him with my Ooh, whips. Okay. Shh. Okay. Don't give it away. <laughs> All right, Zayro, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> so am I still maddened? Uh, no, it only lasted the, as long as the winds are blowing. All right, Zayro is going to use his martial adept ability and disarm Copernicus, or attempt to disarm Copernicus. Buckler's up. <laughs> Buckler's up. What? How did you get a second? Oh, yeah. That's right. So, uh, armor class 19. Oh, damn. That's a hit. Oh. That's that's my armor class. Damn. It's, let's see some damage. Glad you, I'm glad Zabril and Copernicus are finally getting this out of their system. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Zabril. Don't let this little minion get the best of you. You need to whip him back into shape. Whip him good. That's nine damage. <laughs> Oof. Hey, that's only one attack. But and with you that... disarm my pack weapon? Kind of whichever weapon you're holding. I'd imagine your pack weapon, right? I'm waiting for our actual adversary to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Kneel before your master, Dark Elf. <laughs> if you think about drawing blood again... I'm going to do a lot worse than this. Are you as I, uh, attack? What's up? Are you going to attack again or no? No. Okay. But is it, but, so what happened with the disarm? Did you have to roll anything or is he just disarmed? Spent That's a, what I'm checking. I think he's just disarmed. Yeah, you spend a superiority point, right? And it disarms him. Or do I have to make yeah. a strength check? Well, that's what I'm checking, but yeah, I spend a superiority point. Okay, you disarm it. And would this be like a complete surprise to Copernicus? Like he's just all of a sudden Zavril's disarming him. Like one minute he's fighting some sort demon, of demon, and then the <sighs> demon fades, and you see nope. Zavril uh, gushing need, blood. If this the target fails a strength saving throw, DC fourteen. Don't I get disadvantage on strength saving throws? You said. Yeah. Well, no. Strength based checks, not saves. Okay. Uh, two on the die. Yeah, you're not gonna make it, Zavril. What the hell? Boom, Copernicus, your pack weapon flies out of your hand down 60 feet below in the pit. Oof. You guys hear a clang, clang, clang. Boom. All right. 
Um, now, uh, you guys are all yourselves again. The winds die down. And Irime, you're in the center of the room. You see your friends fighting on one side. On the other side, the demon statue. In his hand, a shiny... At this distance, you can now make it out. It's a shiny... It looks like a, a, one of those crystal eyeballs glinting in the torchlight. As Irime's head begins to clear, she looks back to her friends as she hears Copernicus yell and hears the clanking of his sword. She then looks forward, seeing the glinting object ahead of her, and she cannot resist moving towards it. Yeah, you see the shadow of an Elmirage already there, standing on the hand of the statue, waiting for you patiently. Uh, So Irbe flies over, hovering just above the balcony railing. Okay. uh, Close enough to observe what the object is. Yeah, you see it clear as day now. It is indeed a crystal eye. Uh, what what color, color is it? I'm checking oh, now. Sorry. I'm checking the color. Treasure. Ooh, this one is... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so it wasn't just one sorry. hand. It wasn't just one fist that unclenched. It was, it was both of his hands unclenched, and there's a crystal in each hand. What? Two crystals for the price of one. Uh, and I discovered this because under treasure there's two crystals. One is a pearly white crystal, and the other is a scarlet crystal. Yurme must have both. Mm-hmm. So, uh, could I ready an action here? Like, ready a, a, a spell or something? Uh, sure. Can I ready a crim- So curious about these crystals. Me too. So Irbe would like to... So Irbe will ready a chromatic orb, a fire orb in her hand, just in case, as she approaches and snatches the white orb first. Okay. You snatch it up. And then she looks to the statue nervously to see if it moves. As you're about to snatch up the crystal, you notice the hands, both of them, begin to close. You have enough time to snatch one crystal at this point. And as they're closing, you guys see the lever on the wall reset. So I'll, Irbe will stick to her original choice, snatch up the white orb Mm -hmm. as the hands close. All right, so now the scarlet crystal is again, once again, encased in the enclosed fist, and the room had reset. I have them pull the lever again. Yeah. (laughs) So still holding the orb of fire in her hand, she looks to see if her friends have gathered their wits. Uh, Cappy uses his action to summon his pack blade back. (laughs) Zavel begins to uh, dress his stab wound. All right, Svitlongi, what are you doing? Svitlongi was making her way back to the scrying pool. Now that she has the um, amulet attuned to her, she knows that she could control this uh, this pool. All right, uh, you make your way back slowly and steady to the floor above unscathed and unmolested but the entryway you notice as you get up that stairwell looking at the room uh, the scrying pool access is now guarded and from here from where you're standing you see one of those tomb dwarves standing in the doorway so from the stairwell so before you even make it up Uh, the stairs to the floor above, you can see the tip of a battle axe that you can only assume belongs to a tomb dwarf who is just standing motionless in the doorway of the scrying pool. Guarding guarding the actual room. Guarding this entrance. Now you do remember there were two entrances into that tiny room and you can't help but wonder if both entrances are guarded or just the one. She will make her way toward this, the other entrance very stealthily, and I'm actually checking to see what invisibilities 
spells I had and stuff like that. The only way you could ma- you could get to that other entrance is by going finish finishing your trek up the stairwell and going around to the next stairwell above. Oh, so I still have to make it past the dwarf? Yes. So this is pretty much what you're looking at. You were coming up here and you noticed there's a guy standing here in this entryway. So in order to make it to the floor above, you'd have to go up this stairwell and then all the way down through the rust room and then in this way. All right. Um... Have there have we seen uh, insects or anything like that, like moths or bugs, in no. this while we're in the tomb at all? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, there's cobwebs and stuff. Maybe a spider here and there, I guess. I don't yeah, know. I was hoping I was hoping to pick something specific that would go unnoticed, but um, I guess she will cast. I will cast polymorph, Ooh. turn myself into a moth. And I will fly up through the center so that I'm not not anywhere near the tomb dwarf. Mm-hmm. And kind of well, what's the situation with the door to the south there? That goes in. That's a dead. That goes back into the. Uh, oh, that's a de- the dead that's end. That's where you how, smashed all the. You got pop So how would I have to go? Wait, which side did I come in on? The east or the west? You you came up these up stairs. That stairway. Yeah. Oh. So he's standing there, so you gotta fly over here up these stairs. Okay. Well, if he's flying, just fly up the center. Right, fly right, right, right. Yeah, stay to keep a distance. Yep. I mean, if I have to, in order to avoid detection, that's what I'll do. Oh no, there's a cricket in here. Dude, <laughs> that episode of Abyss was the worst fucking editing experience of my life. <laughs> Uh, so Svelongi, you managed... How long does the polymorph last? One hour. Yeah, so you managed to get all the way through. Now, as you're coming, you go all the way around up through the rust room again and down f- where that spiral staircase was. Now to your right is Wither's office. You see the door is open. Wither's body is gone. And to your left, where the scrying pool is, there is another tomb dwarf. So there's two total gui- guarding that scrying pool. And... There might be some... The, the door is kind of half open uh, to Wither's office. From where you are now, there could be another one in there. But they're standing motionless. Okay, I'll just flutter over just to get a peek in through the uh, office door. All right. I don't want to dilly-dally too much. All right, as you fly close, there is one inside of that room. And it kind of cocks it, its head in your direction. Before then, it was just standing absolutely motionless, but it definitely noticed your presence, and now it's just observing curiously, about as curiously as an undead dwarf could. (laughs) Yeah, and then I'll just flit out and uh, make my way back down to the... back down to the third level. The, The body of the yellow bannerman that we saw die in the room with the puzzle floor, that was on the third level. That was in the level that I just came up from, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so with the with the scrying pool guarded, I think I'm shifting my plan. I think I want to make my way, if I can. Ooh, but I might need help to get into that room. Do I? Which room? With the yellow, the corpse of the yellow banner dwarf. Uh, you guys did a long rest. Uh, no, there was a button that opened the block. But then the block would close behind, right? It, oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, because then you could fly through the... You'd be able to get out. You could yeah, even okay. get in through the jackal mouth as, yeah. a, as a moth, right? Yeah, so what I'll do then is I will move to the... I, I will go back to that room. This is my second, my, my second option here. And I'm going to move to the floor tile that I knew was safe because before the dwarf bannerman got killed by the locusts. Mm-hmm. And then I'll revert back to my Yuanti form. And there I will cast Speak with the Dead. Okay, so you're standing on the vulture head tile? Yeah, yeah was that the one right next to the... Yeah. yeah, the vultures first. Okay. Let me just make sure I could... Uh, yeah, so she reaches down to her um, unholy symbol and she lifts open she she touches her fingers to the eyes of the um, 
dwarf. She mutters a few words in primordial and pulls her hand back. Speak. Answer my questions. And so just if you need to know the spell description, you grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice, allowing it to answer the questions you pose. It must still have a mouth and it can't be undead. If the spell will fail if the corpse is the target of the spell within the last 10 days. I get five questions. It only knows what it knew in life, including the languages that it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive, and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful an answer if you are hostile or it recognizes you as an enemy. We get down with some necromancy right now? Oh, yeah. I go to blow my nose and all this shit goes down. <laughs> We're on the dark side now. I don't think this is Svitlangi's first foray into necromancy. My question was, does it even have a mouth? Because I thought it was old bones. If it has like a jaw, maybe. Right. Yeah. Mm. Depends on if the insects ate it or not. So Svitlangi, after casting this Speak with Dead spell, I mean, does it, are you asking it a question or will you know immediately whether it worked or not? Um, I will get five questions. Um, I don't know if I'll know immediately. I guess that's a, a flip part piece of flavor. That uh, Okay, I cast a spell. I will ask, uh, Speak, dwarf. What was your purpose in this place? The jawbone creaks open and a hollow, raspy voice echoes out from another world. We had several goals. One of which was to rescue the moon child. In your search, how deep have you traveled into this place? I have not made it past this room. <laughs> well, well, I didn't know if he was died on his way up or, you know, he could be up and down stairs. Laugh at me. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at you? We're laughing at Svitlongi. Svitlongi. <laughs> <laughs> this is as deep as I made it. And in your searches, have you seen such a thing as an opal crown? A black opal crown? No, lass. Have you heard of a black opal crown? I have not. You have one last question. <laughs> <laughs> what is the secret? <laughs> what is the meaning of life? <laughs> what are the Kentucky Fried Chicken herbs and spices? <laughs> uh, oh, so one last question. Arrow. Oh. Do you know the purpose of these crystal eyes? We were searching for them all to gain entry into the Vault of Reflection. How many were there? <laughs> <laughs> shit. The Vault of Ooh. Reflection. That's perfect. Getting to some good shit. Last question. <laughs> mm, I did not get the information that I sought for myself, but learned something. And Svilangi will start cautiously making her way back to where the group, she had last seen the group. All right. And what are you guys doing next? Zavril, I'm sorry. You turned into a demon on me. I've always been a demon, Copernicus. Oh, uh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys are faced with a little bit of a pickle here. It was a nice move to disarm. You've got one more crystal stuck in a fist, and you know the only way to open it, to your knowledge, is to pull that lever again. Irime, still holding the orb of fire, calls to her friends to hit the switch again. One of us should leave the room. I agree. One of us should leave the room. You should leave the room. <laughs> You're bleeding everywhere. All over my nice boots. <laughs> um, how far is the jump to the wall? The wall is five feet. The crawl space. Uh, yes. Yep, five feet. All right, I think 
Because I can't make it to the platform, so I'm going to jump to the crawl space. Okay. Zavril, you jump to the crawl space. Fucking night crawler. Uh, if... If I don't, if I decide to not cast the spell, that's still a spell slot used if I readied it as an action, right? Or yes. D- yeah. And I, but I don't have to use it, correct? No, you don't have to use it. <laughs> well, okay. you do use it. You cast it already. Yeah. You're just uh, holding g- it. Gotcha. Okay. But it needs a specific. If you're readying something, it needed to be have a specific uh, event. Okay. So yeah, in mind being that the, if the statue moved, so. Okay. So then, yeah, you lost the spell. Oh, well, I still have it ready, and I just want to make sure when the madness hits, I don't launch it at Copernicus no. or anything crazy. No, at the end of the round, it would either release oh, or... So it's already gone. Dissipate. No. So I should restate, so Irme wouldn't have the Orb of Fire any longer. So Irme... Well, I mean, the trigger, it, it's just for that round, right? Yeah. You, you yes. can't hold it for... Uh, so the fire is... St- the fire orb releases from Irame's hand and she calls to her friends to pull the lever once again. Is everyone ready? What do I see? Do I have room to back up? Oh, le- yeah, okay, give me a second. I'll open that up here. Zayro, in that crawl space looking in, you're still wearing your mask, right? Yes. Uh, so you, it, the crawl space itself is is uh, clear with the exception of scattered cobwebs here and there. At the end of that, this crawl space, it looks like it comes out into another five foot hallway that branches off to the left, and you see more of that purple ooze. All right, I'm going to uh, walk into the hallway or into the room before uh, I give my nod to go ahead. Quickly, Copernicus. All right, uh, the hallway stretches out another 30 feet or so. It looks like the purple goo only go- runs uh, your half of the length, and then it fades That's off. That's a good note. All right, go ahead. You can pull it now, Copernicus. All right, Cappy takes a deep breath and then holds it in. Aramay, where are you going? You're staying right there? I'm staying there. Okay. Right, uh, but You don't have to be in the room. We need to get. I need to be over there to get the other orb. I know, but it lasts. The wind lasted one round. You had enough time to fly all the way across the entire room to get to it. Okay, yeah. So Irame will land on the balcony, move past the statue, and into the crawl space as she nods to Copernicus to pull the lever. All right, Copernicus. Yeah, uh, Cappy takes a deep breath and holds it in, like it's gonna help, and. Uh, pulls the lever all right copernicus you pull the lever and at that irame from behind you for the love of fuck you hear movement coming from the crawl space behind you okay so if that much time has lapsed irame isn't flying anymore anyway um, i just saw a moth in the bathroom could have been a yuanti <laughs> could have been a yuanti <laughs> cleric uh, Copernicus, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, wisdom save coming in hot. Natty, one. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. real hot. Get some. Again, the winds. <laughs> <laughs> Scathingly hot. <laughs> yeah, I even held my breath. Shit. <laughs> Again, the scathing, the, the uh, ominous, the scathing. <laughs> Again, the ominous winds come up from below, howling throughout the chamber. And then. The visions of madness return. 39. 39, what happens to you? Oh, you become frightened. I thought so. That was close to my roll. So now you mo- ah! You need to move. <laughs> you need to take your... You need to dash, essentially. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard a trial make that sound. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I guess... Ah! <laughs> I guess from here, you would probably run up this hallway. What do I see? A cloth. <laughs> you cloth. triggered a trap. Oh, is it shut? <laughs> Done. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's just a stone wall. Oh, and, and as I start clawing, there's already other claw marks there from people before me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah! <laughs> An old fingernail. Ew. Yeah. Pick That's my so teeth disgusting. With it. <laughs> that is so gross. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, the fist opens. Irme, you have. The floor. 
You hear, hear Copernicus in there screaming, so you know he uh, pulled the lever. Irabe <laughs> quickly moves to snatch up the red eye. Was the other color? Scarlet. Scarlet. All right, you snatch the scarlet crystal. As the winds are dying down, the fist closes right as you snatch it. Svitlongi, at this you spot Irame. You're coming out of that crawl space at this point where Irame, you notice, is snatching something out of the statue's hand. It appears to be another of the crystal eyes. I am very observant. I have passive perception. <laughs> <laughs> of 18. Of 18. I also am very observant of your observance. No, I saw the 18 and I was like, I thought it was higher. I guess it went from 12 to 18. So. Yeah, passive is, uh, that's wicked high for passive. It's ridiculously high. All right. Uh, what are you guys doing? What happens when she grabs it? Anything? Nothing. No. Door's still closed on my end. So Irabe yeah. will turn to Svitlongi and say, we've retrieved two more of the eyes, whatever they do. Good work, elfin princess. It, is this a door that I'm in front of, or is it just wall? It's a wall. I have learned something from the scrying pool about these eyes. They are the key to accessing something called the Vault of Reflection. That sounds so familiar, yet... I can't remember where we heard it. Unfortunately, more tomb dwarves arrived and I had to flee. So I did not get to use the scrying pool to discover any more information. That is still very useful. Perhaps if we return there, I'll be able to learn more. But for now, that is what I know. Perhaps you're, there was something about the little moon elf that you've been befriending Perhaps she might know something. Cappy does that fingers in the mouth whistle super loud. The tea kettle just whistled when he oh, said that. I was yeah, like, what? perfect. <laughs> this shit perfect is good. <laughs> <laughs> that was trippy. I was right? like, I was like in there. <laughs> Get over here and help me figure this out. And I'll do a perception check on the wall in front of me looking for like any kind of hidden buttons or something. Yep. Uh, you find another 16. fingernail. 16 reveals a little indent. And you slap your fingertip in there, give it the old drow finger, lo and behold, the wall slides open, revealing dusty room beyond. He holds his finger up and blows on it like, you know, the barrel of a gun. <laughs> Still got it. After all these years. <laughs> all right. I think I've got a tomb back here. Zaveril, you hear Copernicus scream that. Knowing that the madness is over with, I will make my way and jump across to the ledge. All right. Zaveril regroups with Copernicus. Svitlongi Irame. You're still on the other side of the balcony, or other side of that room on the far balcony. How long would it take for us to just climb down and go over? Three, four days, easily. <laughs> <laughs> easily. <laughs> no, um, it's a 60-foot climb. Climbing is going to be a strength check, athletics uh, strength check. Ugh. I see Aramay struggling with how to get across, and... Um, I will cast Dimension Door and just hold on to her and then transport us both over to the other side. All right. Burning all your spell ah. slots. I know. All the all the high-level ones, too. I know. That's why I didn't want to cast Fly again. Oh. Psh. Yours was a lower level than mine. <laughs> Third level. Yeah. I had to cast fourth level. Oh. That was my last one, too. But I would have had to cast it for both of us to make it uh, expedite as quickly, yeah. yeah. How else? We could have jumped across? Yeah, we could. Yeah, I just didn't feel like I'm lazy. Oh, I could have jumped across pretty well. I should have done that. I have a good dex. Yeah, my dex is actually really good, too. Oh, but what was it? Athletics or was it acrobatics? Oh. Do you remember? Acrobatics, I to, think. To jump, it was the strength. 
Oh, no, yeah, mine's climb. awful. Oh, the jump was a strength because how yeah, far so it is? Yeah, so is climbing. Yeah, I couldn't make the jump, so. Oh, yeah, I have a negative one to strength. That's yeah, why I flew. Too. Yeah, so. All right. So you are all uh, gathered on the balcony on the west side of this room. Well, Drow, what is it that you found? I appear to have stumbled upon another tomb. Yeah, what do we see in here exactly? All right, Copernicus, you look into the newly revealed chamber. A massive pit dominates this chamber, 15 foot wide, 15 foot deep. And at the bottom of the pit, an eight foot tall clay figure stands motionless beside a stone treasure chest. A silver key hangs from a cord around the figure's neck. Two nine-foot-tall stone statues stand atop plinths on either side of the pit. A, a third plinth against the south wall stands empty. Can we... S- sorry, can you move the map for us? It's a lot easier to visualize it as you go. Okay. Yeah, visually, it's a lot easier to conceptualize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> no, s- seriously. There's, so That's why we need to start posting some of these up. Yeah, so uh, inside the pit, an eight-foot-tall clay figure stands motionless beside a stone treasure chest. Okay, that's one one point. Uh, Around its neck is a silver key. So that's inside the pit. And this is ten foot deep? Deeper? Fifteen. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, now outside the pit, up top on your level, on the east and west side of the pit... You got two statues. One of them depicts a hooded, bearded male figure with his left hand held high and his index finger pointed up. Now the east side is a uh, male knight, an armored male knight, and his gauntleted right hand extended, its palm facing inward toward toward the knight. The palm's facing toward himself. Yeah. That's very odd looking, isn't it? God. Svetlongi. Like it's holding a tablet. As if he was reading something. I agree. This is, what is the, does, can we study the statue a little bit? Is, is his gaze at his palm or is it elsewhere? Okay, yeah, no, the, in the plinth against the south wall is okay, an empty yeah. plinth. So it looks like a statue. Used to be there. Yeah, or, or should be there. Or something should be there. Perhaps one of us. Maybe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most statuesque of us. <laughs> Copernicus, go stand there. And Happy, the most uh, foolhardy. Very stoic. Pose. Very stoic. And as thick as a statue. Mm. Now, Head looking straight the through this room, can I see what extends straight ahead there? Oh, yeah, because we have a door to the north and a door to the west. Mm-hmm. Or, p- yeah, opening. Yeah, I'll take a step in th- into the room if I have to. In fact, I'll be heading down towards that um, bottom plinth. plinth. Yeah, so you step in towards that southern wall, and as you enter the room, you do see on the opposite end of the room, the ha- ha- five-foot-wide hallway does continue uh, west, and that goes in about 20 feet or so uh, before, turn- before turning to the north. Um. To the north of this chamber, on the other side of the pit from you now, is a door. Hmm. Step on the plinth and make a wisdom save. I think I'd make the wisdom save first to see if I'd do it. (laughs) Perhaps that is how one becomes a statue. All right, come on, smarty pants. Get in here. I'm sorry, I was just checking the clues for the third floor to see if anything applied here. Right, and so... um, the gaze of the nice. statues are they is the are they looking at each other are they looking at their hands like is the one I, w- I was studying specifically the night with the gauntlet trying to figure out um what this posture is it is is it is an odd um well i'll tell you this uh since you are a religious uh person why don't you give me a religion check Wow, religion check is pretty low. 
you know, clerics go for wisdom and religions and intelligence check. That uh, is that's interesting. Yeah, that's a. Um, and nor do they have it as proficiency. I mean, I guess anybody, any of you guys can make a religion a religion check. Can I aid yeah. Svitlongi? Yeah. Anybody can do that. You're aiding me? Um, Here oh me. my god, I rolled the identical. Do oh. your notes say write the gods? My notes do say write the gods, and at first glance, you'd think to move the statue below back to its plinth. Ooh. Anyway, I rolled a 12 on the religion. Uh, anyone else? Making, uh, trying to examine these statues. Uh, Cappy doesn't know. The statue I mean, below no, like is clay, right? Are the ones up above s- different material? No, the statue belo- below is clay, and the two up above are stone. And the one down below does bring you back to a moment in history. One of the earlier shrines you visited in Omu. Where you fought the clay guardians. Oh, Cladiator. <laughs> <The> cl- <laughs> it looks like a Cladiator? <laughs> what? <laughs> I spit on it. I don't think you don't guys have seen anything is this similar to one since. Ah. If you piss on it, maybe it'll erode. Well, that's... If it does, in fact, move, that could be good news for us, because I was pondering how we would move this statue back up to its plinth, but perhaps we could... Are you sure that's the... Do, it, does the plinth have the same material as... Like, does it look like it fits? Does it look? That's where I was going with whether or not it's clay or stone. Uh, if or it fits, I mean, the plinth is, uh, yeah, it'll fit a medium-sized creature. But well, I mean, well, do they look like they match? Like, uh, like the other statues are on plinths, right? Yeah. Do they have the same material, the same color? No, all the plinths are the same material. And are the two other statues the same material as the plinths that they're on? Yes. And the one below is of a different material. Yes. Right. Uh, what happened on that religion check? Uh, that was a 12. No, and nobody else? I got I, an 8 on the die. Right. He, no. he did it, and I have yet to... I aided uh, Svitlongi, so I didn't know if I had to wait before doing my own check. Let's say, mm-hmm. I'll say 10 minutes can go by, you guys examining. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll examine whichever one nobody else is examining. All right, and so and it could be a, you could, you don't have to, have to do religion check either. You could do a perception check. Uh, the religion check would give you some some other information. So Irame, uh walking about the room, doing kind of a full circle, examining both statues and looking down at the one below, will roll perception. I also rolled the perception. Okay, and what was what was your religion check? Who did anyone get a twelve or above on their religion? Yes, I yes. got twelve yeah. exactly. I got a 14. Okay. Yeah. And, the, nice. and All right. So everybody at 12 or above with religion, you notice uh, you notice there's a distinct similarity in these statues. Uh, one god appears to represu- represent Azuth, the god of wizardry. And the other... Fuck is that? And the other, Torm, the god of courage and self-sacrifice... Tom, isn't that the one that uh, last called upon and Camp Righteous? <laughs> Torm, <laughs> Torm being the statue on the east and Azuth being the statue on the west? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. What was my dwarf's name from Camp Righteous? Helmut. Oh, yeah. That's good oh, what was his full name? Oh, damn. Helmut Hammer. The Hammer. The, 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 the hammer. Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Helmut. I lost the Hammer. <laughs> That was well. It w- that was his god was <laughs> Torm, I think, or all those guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know, I know him. What was the name of the other god? Azuth, the god of wizardry. Azuth, in which that would be the hooded, bearded one. Yeah. Now you can tell, especially as long you notice right away that these statues appear to uh, they're on a swivel. Here, me. You had mentioned something about writing the gods. Take a look at this. Perhaps this means something to you. You seem to be good with these puzzles. Irame will just nod to Svitlongi, uh, recognizing that she's been alarmingly nice since she came back from her journey. It's a second compliment she's been paid. By Svitlongi. Maybe she had some THC spray. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm standing right next to the <laughs> secondhand spray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I don't know if you want to use my perception check that I had done, but walking around the room, she uh, uh, she does a full walk around the room, observing the statues on the east and west side, and then looks down. And my perception check was a 18. The 18, you see... Yeah, the two statues can be rotated. How? And you also notice during your perception checks that the pit itself is closed by a transparent magical barrier. Now, Uh, you may have noticed that as you were walking by, maybe some dust or something. You know, you kicked it up and it kind of fell against this magic barrier. The pit is actually sealed and Irabe will actually kick some dust so that the rest of her friends can observe. Fascinating. And it also appears that these statues are able to pivot on their plithes. Is Pivoting the, plithes. Plithes. The palm extended, is that a right hand? Yes. yes. And the other one's left hand. Well, right the god. Uh, I also got a 22 in the perception, and I'm looking to see if there's anything else in, in the room that looks like it could interact with the statues, like anything on the walls. Or maybe ceiling. The, or ceiling mm, with yeah. like symbols or some sort of marking or anything of interest uh nope there is absolutely nothing a a pretty boring room apart from the action here you got uh the two statues standing on either side uh the chest and you do look down in the chest now that you get a good look the chest the the locking mechanism on the chest is also silver so you can only assume the silver key hanging around the clay guardian uh is the key that opens that chest yeah yeah, I was already assuming that. I was hoping anyway. <laughs> Suck if it did. <laughs> so it's a chest. This isn't a a tomb like the other nine gods. Are both statues facing inward towards the pit? Yeah, yeah. I thought they were facing each other, and they're on opposite ends of the pit. So it would um. Well, let's, let's rotate them to the right. Both of them. Clock- we got to start somewhere. Yes. Clockwise. And now what about the plinth Cappy's by? Does that rotate also? I wonder if something's going to appear. No. The plinth. The statues rotate on the plinth, right? Yes. yes. Yep, the plinth itself doesn't rotate, just the statues. And so you're both... You're, oh, so how are you going to... Who's rotating what? Perhaps we should do this at the same time. Yes. In synchronicity. We need to write the gods. Is that were those the exact words of the clue? You write God the go- or gods? Gods. Yes, write the gods is the only. That's all the clue has. Which could be literal, as Copernicus is um, suggesting, yep. or it could mean something symbolic that they have to be made correct. But let's d- start with rotating them to the right, each one. Which one are you starting with? Should we try both at the same both time? Of them. Yeah, I agree. So two of us on each. All right, who's Cappy, doing? get over here. Move this statue. No. Cappy leans against the wall and busts out another ration. <laughs> <laughs> You're already there, Zabril. Do it yourself. I didn't hurt you that bad, did I? No, you barely even scratched me. Atta as boy. As, uh, as Svitlongi and Irame are together near the statue, she will... Spitlong, you will once again uh, mention to Irme. Um, I did see something about your moon elf friend in my vision. So perhaps when we get a moment after all this is over, it would be remer- worth speaking to her about this fault of reflection. Yes, we can consult Una when all this has come, <laughs> when we rest next. Una? <laughs> Una, oh, that's my kid. Uh, <coughs> Irame will say, yes, we can consult Luna as soon as we figure out this next puzzle. All right, so who's rotating what? Uh, uh, I guess Svitlongi and Irame are rotating one, and Zabel's attempting to rotate the other. Right, so Svitlongi and Irame are the one on the east. Which one was that? The the Torm? Mm. Do I have them right? Mm-hmm. Torm was Torm. on the east. Yep. Cappy casts uh, Mage Hand. And sends it over to help uh, Zavril rotate. Nice. 
sit on this and rotate. <laughs> <laughs> the middle finger. <laughs> the drow the drow finger again, dude. The <laughs> magic drow finger. This <laughs> that spectral drow finger. <laughs> All right, so um so you guys are rotating both the statues to the right at the same time. Is, do I have that Attempting right? Attempting to, yes. All right, well, the good news is both statues do indeed rotate to the right. The bad news is... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, what doing so, a couple things occur. The clay golem fades from the pit and appears on that empty plinth. Nice. Fuck, I didn't see that coming. And the magical beer barrier. And it's an it? it, and it's initiative. But also oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I figured if we got it wrong we were gonna have a battle. Also at the same time as the as the clay golem teleports out of the pit onto the plinth, Copernicus gets transported go. down below into the pit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so you're next to the plinth, maybe? And we'll see you next week. No! <laughs> you got your wish. The yep. statue has All right. Oh. Is the silver key, like, hanging from my head? No, oh, it's hanging on the thing that we have to fight. <laughs> yeah, it's around the Blake Owen's neck. Make that. <laughs> So when we were talking about the draw finger, I just had this image of Dolly from Ruby. <laughs> Previously on the Natty 19 podcast. We opened things up last episode with <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me start. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Going to need everybody to make a will save. Will save or wisdom? Wisdom save. Make make a Hold on, let me let me get this fucking straight. Will save doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Still exists, just not in this? 5e. <laughs> <clears throat> Wailing winds. Uh, look, I, like I can make drow finger too. 